Welcome to the channel. This is my 45 minute follow along dumbbell workout that you can do at home with a couple of pairs of dumbbells or just one adjustable pair. We're going to start off with a five minute body weight warm up consisting of five 30 second exercises for two rounds. Then we'll move onto the main dumbbell workout. I'm going to kick things off with a Kang squat. This is great for mobility, but it does take a bit of practice. With your hands behind your head, push your hips back, feeling the hamstring stretch in a good morning. Then you're going to sink from that bottom position into a back squat position, bringing your chest upright, looking forwards, and then you reverse it to come back up to the top. Make sure you can feel your hamstring stretch at the bottom of the good morning and let your knees come forwards and out as you sink into that back squat position. Keep an open chest throughout the whole movement. With these inchworms, keep your legs as straight as possible, reaching down towards your toes. You're gonna to walk out into an engaged press up position. Then you're gonna inch your hands back in so you can touch both toes, stand back up and repeat. From a press up position, bring your foot up on the outside of one of your little fingers and then facing that front leg, turn and reach towards the ceiling. You're going to alternate sides, opening out the chest and upper back whilst getting a great hip stretch also. Lie face down on your mat, make a W shape with your arms, lift the hands as high as you can off the floor, reach overhead like you're doing a shoulder press, trying to keep your hands as far away from the floor as you can. Try and lock the arms out overhead and try and minimize any arching of the lower back. Come into a wide stance press up position. You're going to kick into a downward dog stretch, touch the opposite toe, look under the armpit, getting a nice stretch on the lats and hamstrings and a slight rotation of the body. You're going to alternate toe taps, touching the opposite toe each time. If you need to bend your knees a little bit to keep your back flat in the downward dog stretch, that's absolutely fine. Let's go straight back into those Kang squats. We're gonna just do one more round and then we'll get into the main dumbbell workout.
section A, this is gonna be the heaviest pair of dumbbells you use in this workout. You need to pick a weight that you can do around eight reps per arm of a single dumbbell snatch with it, or around 12 bent over rows with the pair. We're gonna be doing four exercises, doing 40 seconds of work with a 20 second transition between exercises. You're gonna do three rounds in total. You're gonna start with an alternating snatch before moving onto a single dumbbell goblet squat. Then you'll move onto some sprinter crunches and then you're gonna go onto an RDL and then at the bottom of each rep, you're gonna do a bent over row before coming back to the top. We're gonna start things off with an alternating side, a single dumbbell snatch. So get ready to go. Most of the power with a dumbbell snatch should come from the first part of the movement using the hip drive, and then it should pass past your shoulder relatively easy, catching at the top with a nice locked out arm. If you need to support the dumbbell back to the shoulder using the other arm, that's fine. Whether you transfer the dumbbell between hands at the bottom or as I'm doing, as I come off the shoulder, I'm transferring midair as the dumbbell comes down. That means that I can kind of use the stretch reflex out the bottom and go straight up to the top. Whichever feels more comfortable to you, use that. So you've got a 20 second rest now and we're gonna go onto a single dumbbell goblet squat. You wanna keep a nice upright position for that goblet squat, keeping the knees pushed out on the outside of the big toes. You're doing this for time, so there's no rush to do loads of reps. Just keep good quality movement and good control. So I recommend about three counts down, maybe a little pause at the bottom if you're comfortable, and then coming back up. Make sure the dumbbell isn't pulling your upper back forwards, so there's no rounding of your upper back. You wanna make sure that your heels are on the floor, but feel free to have your knees come forwards and out over your toes. Coming onto the mat now, you're gonna need one dumbbell for these sprinter crunches. You're gonna do a small reaching crunch action. And as you come up into the reaching crunch, you're gonna alternate knee tucks up towards your chest. Don't try and come all the way up like you would in a sit up. This is just a small reaching crunch, stacking the abs, reaching the dumbbell up towards the ceiling, and at the same time, tucking that knee in towards your chest. Make sure as you come down into the bottom position that you're not arching your lower back off the mat. So you wanna maintain a reasonable level of core tension throughout the whole exercise without arching your back up and down. Moving on to the last exercise, you're gonna do a Romanian deadlift and then at the bottom of the Romanian deadlift position, you're gonna do a bent over row rep. You come up in between each rep to give your lower back a rest and repeat for 40 seconds. On this, I like to do my Romanian deadlifts with slightly bent knees. It helps me to keep a much flatter back and a much more stable position so that I can do a good bent over row rep without too much body movement. Make sure you're pulling the dumbbells up and back towards your pockets so that you're getting the lats involved instead of just pulling directly up in a straight line towards the ceiling, which will be too much arm work and also a bit stressful on your lower back. So make sure you're rowing back and in towards your hips. You've got a quick 30 second break, so grab a drink of water if you can. That's round one of three done in this first section A. We're gonna do two more rounds. We're gonna start back with those alternating side single dumbbell snatches. So get yourself ready to go.
There's round two complete. Take a break and get ready to go for that final round in section A. Well done, that's the heavier dumbbell section A complete. Moving on to section B now, you're gonna need some lighter dumbbells that you can do around 12 neat dumbbell skull crushers with. That should be the hardest exercise in this section. We're doing the same format as before, doing four exercises, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off for three rounds. You're gonna do a hammer curl, then you're gonna supinate at the top and lower with control with that palms up position then onto a Z press. After the Z press, you've got those skull crushes and then finally finishing with a dumbbell leg raise. We've got three rounds, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Keep good form, keep control. Don't worry too much about how many reps you're doing and just try and keep the quality of movement high.
We're starting off with a dumbbell hammer curl. You're going to supinate at the top, turning your palms to the ceiling and lower down with control. Minimize any body movement for the curl, maximizing the squeeze of your biceps. Have a nice controlled eccentric lowering phase. Twist it back to that neutral grip at the bottom. So we're hammer curling up and we're classic curling down. Sitting down onto the mat now, you're going to need a pair of dumbbells. We're going to do a Z press, which is essentially a seated shoulder press without any backrest. Not only is this exercise great for your shoulders, but it's also really good for working on your upper back posture. So you want to make sure you're sitting nice and upright unrounding any rounding of your upper back sit forwards and try and stack your vertebrae on top of one another if you need to you can unlock your legs like i am if you're really flexible you could have an l shape with your body and have completely flat legs make sure you're pressing up so your biceps finish level with your temples or your ears rather than pressing forwards Next up, you're gonna move onto a dumbbell skull crusher. You're gonna lower the dumbbells next to the tops of your ears, keeping your upper arm relatively fixed. Extend at the elbow, squeezing the triceps at the top. The key to doing this well is not to turn it into a pullover. So you're gonna keep your upper arm relatively still keeping the angle at your armpit consistent. So you're only hinging at the elbows, making sure the triceps are doing all the work. Low with control and try not to let your elbows flare out, but also make sure you don't hit yourself in the head with the dumbbells. final exercise in this four is going to be a dumbbell leg raise. We're going to maintain reaching crunch top position with your upper body and whilst doing that you're going to do some nice controlled leg raises. You should have your head and your shoulder blades just off the floor reaching the dumbbells up towards the ceiling and then you're going to lower your legs with control until you feel like your lower back wants to arch off. Keep it flat, don't let it arch, and then slowly bring the legs up towards the dumbbells. Repeat that, maintaining a good core tension throughout. That's the first round complete. Take a rest before you go back for round two.
two rounds done, just one to go. And then we're gonna move onto that 16 minute AMRAP. Great job. On to the last section of the workout now. Section C is going to be a 12 minute AMRAP. You're going to need to pick a weight that is somewhere between the weight you've just used for section B, but a little bit lighter probably than the weight you used for section A. I went closer to the weight I used for section A, but I think that was a mistake. If I did it again, I'd probably pick a weight closer to what I did for the previous section. You're going to need to be able to do 12 hand cleans. 10 front squat, eight leg reverse lunge, and six push presses with it. And you're gonna repeat that for as many rounds as possible.
I did about four and a bit rounds in this, but I think you could do a lot more if you just went a little bit lighter. So it's up to you. You can either take bigger breaks through the AMRAP and go heavy, or if you want to get a sweat on, pick a slightly lighter weight. Get yourself ready to go for 12 hand cleans. And we're off. As you can see in one corner of your screen, you've got the 12 minute countdown. And the other corner is a reminder of the four exercises in this AMRAP and how many reps I want you to do on each exercise. The 12 hang cleans can link nicely into the front squats. You can go straight into the reverse lunges and then clean it back up for the push press. But feel free to take breaks between the exercises breaks between the rounds, whatever it takes to keep you moving and get a good workout. If you want to keep time with me, that's fine. I went a little heavy, so I'm going to take more breaks maybe than you might need, but it's completely up to you. Keep working as hard as you can. I reckon you could get about six rounds on this if you didn't go too heavy. And if you've gone for a heavy weight, four rounds is a great target.
And that's a wrap, workout complete. Let me know in the comments, how many rounds did you do of that 12 minute AMRAP and what weight did you use? I'd love to hear how you got on with that. This is the first 45 minute dumbbell workout I've done. So also let me know if you'd like to see more of these longer dumbbell videos. As always, if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button, give the video a like, consider subscribing to my channel. I've got loads more follow along videos for you to have a go at. Hopefully see you again soon for another workout.